Oh, yes. I can't tell you how glad I am it's today. For so many other reasons, right? I am so glad it's today. Well, let's start off with an old hymn of the church. It's an old hymn of this church.
argue with me on a Sunday morning? I said, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, I don't know if I found him or he found me. I kind of think the latter is true. But we got found anyway. I have found a peace that plows on through the storm. I have found a joy that jumps over sadness. Thank you, buddy. I have found a love that lights up every room. Tell him something now, say. I have found, I found you. So glad about it.
feeling pretty good this morning. Well, I'm glad. But there's more. Oh, there's always more. Look at your neighbor and say, there's, there's always more in the Spirit. Oh, yes, there is. I mean, after all, what do you want this morning? What do you want this morning? That God can't give you. And you know, if he don't give it to you, if God don't give it to you, you either can't have it or you can't keep it. Oh, but with God, you know, he blesses and he adds no sorrow to it. So, you are all I want. You are all I need. Everything my heart could hope for. We are longing for the glory of the Lord. Cause we know there's so much more. You are all I want. And you are all I need. Everything my heart could hope this morning because we know there's so much more. I could have stayed in bed you know because we know there's so much more oh yeah hey you may be seated for just a minute we got some business to do hallelujah for today God's got some things planned how about Andrew and his family come out this is time for ordination uh, I want to tell you some things this is going to be a charge that the Bible gives you and so we decided to go with the same charge they gave you yeah it's a pretty good one <laughs> it says this it says let no one despise or think less of you because of your youth but be an example and a pattern for the believers in speech in conduct and in love he said devote yourself to private and public readings exhortation preaching personal appeals and instilling doctrine do not neglect the gift that is in you that special inward endowment which was directly imparted to you by the holy spirit by the prophetic utterance when the elders laid their hands upon you at your ordination. So we're going to lay our hands on you and we're going to impart from you of the giftings that God has for you and the giftings that we have. And this is your day. This is your time. This You were born for this stuff. This is you. This is you. And when we ordain you, it is an incredible privilege from this church to be able to stand behind you. Also, I understand that he has a fund me page that you could talk to him about that will help him in the work that he's doing for God, okay? So let's keep him in mind. Let's give to every good work, okay? So thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Um, it's always fascinating to me, because I'm an only child. It's, only, it's always fascinating to me to see how different brothers and sisters can be. And your family is probably the primary example in my life of that. Just because you, I've been around you guys since day one, uh, and, and, and I see how different you guys are, the, uh, uh, Lil, too. And uh, uh, it's amazing to me. And it's like you're not the same. You're not the same people. You don't have the same gifts. You don't have the same talents. But you have the same call. Uh, 
Bill and Julie made this whole family so that, uh, so that God could be served and the kingdom would be expanded. And, and uh, that's just a marvelous, wonderful thing. And, and you're, you're a big part of that. So, uh, so we just, uh, especially, you know, I, 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 just, uh, I just call out your gifts of administration, your gifts of leadership, uh, your gifts of, 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 of influence, influencing other people in, in, in other situations, even projects, influencing projects. I just, uh, I just thank God for you, and, uh, and we just release that anointing of the Holy Spirit to you congregationally. Everybody in the congregation, stick your hands out and just release a, 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 a blessing of Holy Ghost anointing to Andrew right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I, I, think, I think yours might be the most unusual expression of ministry of all, of all the guys in your family it, it, because, uh, because you're just going to get into places that no one else could get into. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, Andrew, I, I feel like God has you on a fast track. He really does. And what you're going to accomplish in terms of development and maturity in the next uh, couple years is going to be very quick because he's moving very quick. And it's what you're going to do now and what you're going to enter into in terms of instruction and helping people and encouraging people is p part one. But part two is going to be a opportunity to work in politics. And I believe that about you. I, I don't know that your opportunity will be here in New Mexico, but I do think it will be some, it, that door will open in a different place for you, and you're going to have an opportunity to share the real gospel of Jesus Christ with people who don't know him in a way that will be unique, very unique. I lay hands on you, and I impart prophetic anointing. I can't give you any more of the Holy Spirit because you already have all of him but I can impart an anointing, and I do, in the name of Jesus, that you would have words of wisdom and words of knowledge that would open the hearts of people, and no matter who they are, and that the Holy Spirit would quicken you, and you would be fearless in Jesus' name. No self-doubt in Jesus' name. Let that go. So this is an awesome adventure, and phase one is beginning, and phase two and phase three are going to keep building on what has been started but it's on an accelerated path says the Lord because I will accomplish through you what it's maybe taken me 20 years to see God is accelerating in you and so we bless you in Jesus name yeah just, we just um, I feel like God just wants to put more love in you Andrew you have a lot a love that um, God's going to give you more in the name of Jesus. Just kind of um, build upon you. And we, we agree. We agree with everything happening here. And, um, yeah, we accept it. Um, you've always been a real, real personable, real loving guy. Um, you've always had a, a different bent than anybody in the family, just as, as Dave's been mentioned. But... I, I stand in agreement with those things, and I say, say, don't don't let self doubt or or uh, fear of any kind stand in your way, because God is definitely clearing a path for you, and you can always count on it. <laughs> you know, I see doors that have been locked for years and decades, and even centuries locked by fear and hate and anger and you're going to step up to those doors and you're going to open them and in inside you're going to say what's what's the big deal you know i just opened the door but the people around are going to say how did he do that you, you're going to have such power from the holy spirit that to you it's just going to seem natural but to those that are around they're going to, to look on in awe and, and it's going to really make a difference in them I see you skipping down the road. And like in The Wizard of Oz, it's all black and white. But when you come, there's such joy that is released that it turns to color. And you bring a hope that other people have not been able to bring to dark situations. Amen. You all have shared the same last name, and now you're going to share the same first name. 
to just read this thing here. You know, uh, um, for for us, for us in the church, anytime that uh, someone's ordained into the ministry, it's a it's a public statement on their part, and uh, uh, we need to honor that. We need to receive that as a gift, and we need to send him out as a gift. And uh, everybody knows that you take care of your gifts, isn't that right? So uh, I'm just going to read this. This is a certificate of ordination from Glory Bound Ministries Inc. This hereby certifies that Andrew Cates, who has given evidence that God has called him into the ministry, was anointed and set apart for the teaching and preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ as he may have opportunity. And it's uh, dated a a couple weeks ago because that's when we actually uh, 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 certified this. But um, uh, it's signed by Claudia and I, but it's really ordained and signed by the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, they're the three guys that called you into this, and they don't give their gift with uh, with any repentance at all. So, uh, so we just uh, we just want to introduce the congregation to, and this is the what the first name that you were talking about. We want to introduce uh, you to the congregation as Reverend Andrew Case. I wasn't going to say this. I thought, well, I'll tell Andrew after. But when your dad laid his hand on you, I saw something open up for you in television. And he stood in a place where there was that connection, that inheritance. And I believe that there will be something in television where you'll be on the air and sharing um, some things um, in a way that only you'll be able to do. But there is there's something here that's going to go forth. In Jesus' name. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Even more to praise him about. Amen. Oh yeah. I always like the first line of this song to be a, a doctrine check. See if we're see if we're uh, see if we're doing what uh, what the fivefold ministry ought to be doing. You know, fivefold ministries to be developing uh, unity in the faith and, and uh, uh, helping everybody else step into the work of the ministry. Isn't that right? So let's just take a little uh, let's just take a little theology check here. The earth belongs to Him. Are we good so far? You know, you can get so devil conscious that that's all you see. But uh, this does not belong to the devil anymore. Everybody say Redeemer. Jesus is a Redeemer, and he redeemed the earth to himself. And he promises in Galatians to redeem all things to himself. Everybody say all things. That's even the devil you've been chasing around. So I just have to say the earth belongs to him of it all it is his the world everyone everything all there is all the earth belongs to him all the earth belongs to him when the fullness of time had come Holy One, so the subjects of the law might be made free, so he could call us all his sons, and that's what he does, so he could call us all his Get on a train and run around the country, right? Restoration of 
come once again. The climax of this age is now at hand. Everything will be made as one and headed up in Him. All according to His plan. I say it's all according to His plan. And even in the midst of all the chaos we see, I know He has a plan and is working it. All according to His plan. Restoration of to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. There are doors opening in the Spirit. And 
the Holy Ghost isn't the kind of guy that's going to shove you through every single one of them. Some of them you're going to have to walk through yourself. Some of them you're going to have to want to walk through.
But look at your neighbor and say, religious prayer that is. See, it's, it's kind of like one of those hotel doors, I think. Double-sided. And it's open on his side. The door to healing. It's open on his side. The door to revelation. It's open on his side. door to restoration, to joy, to peace, to blessings, to prosperity. It's open on his side. And he says he's knocking. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, he says. I don't know, maybe we're just spoiled to go to the supermarket and have one of those doors that opens up for you just because you're standing there. Well, the Spirit's not like that. At least not sometimes. If there's a door that has your name on it, or your promise's name on it, just grab the doorknob, give it a twist, and yank it towards you. Amen? Glory be to God. some other things in the spirit here we're going to hear the word we're going to hear the spirit all mixed up together so we can receive it but first before we do that we're going to let claudia do a little bit of kingdom business amen
as we get ready, we're going to receive two offerings today because we have a guest speaker. And remember what God promised us, that if we would treat guest speakers like they're the best, he'd always send us the best. And so we believe that every time. The first offering we're going to do is for the church because we're going to take care of our church business. And uh, the second offering we're going to do is for our guest speaker. But we're going to make all the checks out to Glory Bound. If you need a cash offering envelope for this first offering that is for the church, please raise your hand. It's for your cash giving, credit card giving. And uh, if you're watching by the Internet, hey, don't you like the improvements we've made? So do I. Uh, I want to tell you something. If you're watching by Facebook, go ahead and go to our website, gloryboundmen.com, and uh, push the Donate button. Let's all be a part of this. You know what's cool is people that are watching on Facebook are also giving prophetic words here. And so if you have a prophetic word and you have a prophetic word that are watching by the web, type it out for us. We love it. Love to have that. And so this first offering, as we do it and as we give to the church, we're going to believe that God does what he says. How about that? I, what can we do? What great work can we do to believe him? And we believe him in the realm of finances. We believe him in the realm for our families, for every area of our life. It is no longer going to be a hand-to-mouth type mentality, but a God mentality so that we can give to every good work. So whenever you're ready to give to Glory Bound Church, you just stand up, levantate, and you bring it right up to the blue buckets right there. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless every giver here. You said you've given us seed to sow. And, Father, we take that seed. doesn't look like much, but we take that seed and we choose to sow it into the kingdom in the holy name of Jesus. And we expect a harvest of souls. We plant a seed in the natural, and we expect in the supernatural for growth to come for that. For there should be fruit, fruit, fruit in every area, financially, spiritually, emotionally in our bodies i thank you for that father in the holy name of jesus thank you father thank you lord this second offering is going to go for our guest speaker and you're gonna make your checks out to glory bound again but we're gonna bless him real good how many of you know our guest speaker oh me either so this is going to be really really an awesome 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 blessing today if you need a cash giving envelope and this time we're going to pass the buckets if you need a cash giving envelope, would you raise your hand? And this is for our second offering for your cash giving and your credit card giving. I see them over here. And so they'll bring that to you. The ushers will bring you their cash envelopes. Okay. <laughs> First the envelopes, then the buckets, because it'll take a while to get them written. So this will just be for our guest speaker. We keep them separate. And then his uh, meeting tonight, we'll put it all together for him and give him one great big check that they'll have to get a crane to take out of here because it'll be so big and so awesome. All right. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you once again for this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful speaker that you have sent us. I thank you that your anointing abides within. And, Father, as this, as our guest speaker goes forth and ministers here, Father, that it will be great seeds that are planted here in the holy name of Jesus. And I thank you for the seed that we're giving. You said a laborer is worthy of his hire. And, Father, I thank you that you, you have promised as we step out in your things that men would give to us. And we are the men that are giving to him right now in the holy name of Jesus. I thank you for blessing. Whenever you're ready, you guys can pass the buckets. And, Mary, would you come up here for a moment? See, I know you thought she was the usher. And she was, but her twin sister here is now going to do some things. <laughs> My twin sister, yeah. Um, I want you to just take a moment to kind of explain something that's happening a little bit. Um, for the past few, few days or week, I keep seeing the same vision of the earth, and it's like you get to be a spectator of it. And as God, all the things that have happened on the earth, of course we know all the hurricanes and you know, all the things that have gone on. But when I saw the earth, I felt like it moved its position and that the lines were different than they had been in the past. So I want you to know that the word of the Lord is this. God has already shifted and moved some things. And you're going to try to walk the old way you've been walking, but you're going to find out that that path, that line isn't there anymore. So you need to walk in the newness of what God's doing right now in this hour because things have moved. It's not that they're going to move. They did move. And you're trying to do what you used to do 
when something new is happening. So don't be afraid. Walk out in the new things that God is telling you to do. And, and, and it might be scary a little bit because change is always a little bit scary. But this change is ordained by God. And you are safe to do so. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> and I have a little bit of a word for you guys. Would you mind standing? In light with that word, the scripture that I got for you is in Psalm 16, 6. It says, the boundary lines of the land have fallen in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. So this is supposed to mean that what's been hard for you in the past and what you have worked and worked and worked to get a result from is shifted to be easier because the lines have fallen in a pleasant place. And this includes your family, your children. Those things have shifted for them too. And you're going to see the fruits of what you've sowed come to pass. So things are different today than they were before. And what's hard is now going to be much easier. You'll decree a thing, the Lord says, and it will be established. And it's like the Lord in the Spirit is dumping um, huge amounts of grace over your lives because that's a, a, a way to move so much quicker than in the old way, okay? So I'm speaking that. God said to tell you that you're getting new shoes. And the shoes are boots. So I, I speak that in the name of Jesus. And I don't know, you know, exactly where you come from, what state, etc. But I keep seeing the state of Tennessee. Interesting. And I see, like, you know how a radio... Um, the radio sounds, the beep, 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 beep. it's like a radio antenna in the state of Tennessee. So something's going to come forth from for you in that state. Some work, something that you're going to do, and it's going to be in the airwaves. So I'm speaking that over you today in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Yeah. And this Lovely lady right here, you have blue scarf on. You're sitting next to our, our brother from Waxby. Would you stand up? Would you extend your hands towards her? Dean, could you come up just a moment? We're speaking healing over you today in the name of Jesus. Real healing and real comfort in Jesus' name. Um, you have done something for your family you have changed the generation. You have changed the course of things in your family, okay? Your prayers and your intercession have changed some things. And you'll see the fruit of those things. It, you'll see them manifested in the lives of everyone in your family. Be because God is faithful and he's heard you. And there's a real quickening for your body today in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord. It's real hot here now. Help her, Lord. And just stay with her. Would you guys please just stay with her and bless her? And thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sir, I'm sitting just a little bit behind you. And... I felt some conflicted things. <laughs> and I want to speak a peace over you in the name of Jesus. And I saw the Lord God take, um, take an assignment and kind of tear it up and put something brand new in your hands. So I want you to understand this is a brand new time for you with a brand new assignment in Jesus' name. There's absolute restoration for your heart today. All the places where maybe it's been injured in church business, <laughs> healed in Jesus' name. God said to tell you he has not forgotten your faithfulness. So this is a new day. Amen. I think I'm done.
from me. Dan, I'd like you to introduce our guest speaker. Glad to. We're so glad. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I, I'm a part of the uh, Heartland Apostolic Prayer Network out of Oklahoma City. It's an organization that's uh, 50 states strong and about 80 nations now, somewhere in there, and growing. We, the vision is it's, it's going to hit 100. And John and Jolene Hamill are representatives out of Washington, D.C. They carry major governmental anointing. They have uh, been very instrumental in the things that are happening in our nation, uh, especially in our nation's capital, and uh, very well connected with the likes of uh, Chuck Pierce, John Benefield, Cindy Jacobs, uh, folks like that. Uh, very high-level stuff that's going on in D.C., and, of course, we need that. Amen. Every, we're all praying for D.C. We're all praying for our president and the seat of government. And John and Jolene in 2016 were given uh, an assignment by the Lord had to do with the turnaround tour, a turnaround train that was that Dutch Sheet saw that Bob Jones before he sometime before he was it long before he died or sometime before he died saw and then uh, uh, the vision was given to John Hamill and the train uh, there was uh, they were to travel to all 50 states which he which they did on a train 50 states imagine and uh, and uh, and speak into this whole thing about turnaround well we did see a turnaround in our nation we saw wonderful things happen. The election was not at all what some people thought was going to happen in November. And since then, there have been five special elections that kind of didn't turn out the way some people wanted. Doggone it. <laughs> and so now the Lord has, and, and somewhere be after that, the Lord revealed that they are to take another tour, all 50 states, on the glory train. The glory is going to be released here in this new year that just started, right? Wednesday, Rosh Hashanah. And so that's what's happening. They're, we're privileged to have them come through New Mexico here at Glory Bound. Amen. 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 Would you welcome John and Jolene Hamill? Thank you. Well, it's great to be with you this morning. We are very, very excited to be at Glory Bound Ministries. On the glory train. There's something about this that you just can't make up. And uh, I think that, how many of you came from a pretty great distance to come here? How far away? Texas. Okay. Holly, I know Holly Kingsbury here. She came all the way from uh, uh, the Pueblo Reservation west of town. Thank you, Holly, for coming out here. But uh, I, I think we traveled the farthest to be here today. Not just, <coughs> not just from Washington, D.C., but uh, we heard that your Sunday services are something not to be missed. And so we traveled 17 hours by train from Kansas City yesterday, Friday night through yesterday, to get here, to be with you, and we're very excited. We prayed, we actually prayed at the geographic center of the nation, that was an exciting thing. We ministered uh, in, in Kansas, at, at uh, Topeka, Kansas, at Charles Parham's church, his healing room church, where Holy Spirit first fell in North American continent. That was pretty exciting. Went to Kansas City had some ministry there, and then we got on a train and endured 17 hours of shaking just to be with you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, this train is bound for glory. <clears throat> so this is my beautiful wife, Jolene. She's going to pray for us, and if she sees anything or hears anything, she'll be given a report to you. I guess we're here today, this morning, and tonight. So kind of want to lay a foundation and just kind of move in the spirit, and we'll see what God does this morning, and we'll just continue on tonight with uh, uh, 
combination of sharing some history, moving in the spirit, and sharing some secrets. Is that okay? All right, Julie. I um, I heard the word ministry of helps as I sat there, and especially when we were praying over the guy you commissioned today. But the Lord said, tell them I have my ministry of helps, that there is a ministry of helps that is coming greater to this congregation, and my ministry of helps is in the angelic. And the Lord says, I am going to send you angelic help. There have been assignments and missions and things going on in people's personal situational lives that you haven't necessarily been able to break all the way through in. And the Lord says, this day, mark this day, because I'm about to send my ministry of helps and the angelic forces to come in a very powerful way to break you through. So if we can just all pray, I'm going to pray, Lord, bring them all in. Every angel you have for this region, every angel you have for every family, every angel you have for this church, Lord, I ask that they all come on the assignment that they're meant to do. And the Lord says there is a very special mission I'm going to require of this church. And I am going to bring exactly what you need in the realm to break through. And I'm going to send you help from heaven to do it, says the Lord. Jesus! That works. That's really good, sweetheart. It was interesting when we, from the time we were in Kansas City all the way out here, I kept hearing this song that I learned right after I got saved in college. Uh, I got saved in Ohio, and every once in a while, we would drive up to Rod Parsley's church, and uh, it was back when it was in full-on revival. I mean, 100 people a week would get saved. If it was just 50, they would ask God what was going on wrong. <coughs> And uh, they, they had a song about, we are living in the spirit, and we won't turn around. We are driving out our enemies, possessing holy ground. We are heirs of his promises, and his voice we have heard. We can dwell in heavenly places when we're walking in God's word. No ground, not giving up no ground. We've got a cause worth fighting for. Devil, we're not going to take no more. No ground. Not giving up no ground. We're absolutely, positively glory bound. <clears throat> we're not giving up no ground. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't figure out why I was hearing that song coming out here. And then it's, of course, it's, it's glory bound. Suddenly, it all makes sense. Well, we hope to make sense of your life today. And if it doesn't happen today, you know, maybe tonight. And if it doesn't happen tonight, well, someday. Because when you're a prophetic church, not much of what you do makes a whole lot of sense in the now. You kind of have to step out by faith. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong crowd here. But I think you guys are forerunners. I think you are pioneers. I think this is a pioneering state. I'm not sure, but I think so. Isn't this the land of Los Alamos where they, okay, and white sands, I think, white, you know, fire and speed and in the spirit realm, you guys are on ground that is meant for pioneers. And if you're not a pioneer, you probably feel a little bit out of place. And so maybe if you're not a pioneer yet, you ought to explore becoming one. We, uh, we were 
minding our own business on vacation in Virginia Beach after a very long prayer journey that we uh, had. We, we, we had a prayer and revival journey all throughout the 13 colonies of our nation, which we perceived to be the geographic east gate of our nation. If that makes sense to you, Ezekiel saw the glory coming in by way of the gate facing east and filling the house by way of the gate facing east. Very interesting. I believe this is the eastern part of Albuquerque, if I'm not mistaken, an east gate. I, I, I can't tell you how many times on our tour this time around, we've just gone to the church out on the east gate, and we've been partnering with them to see the east gate open and the glory of God come in, okay? That's really our assignment from the Lord. So, Back in 2014, we, we felt like heaven's court had uh, uh, granted us a verdict in favor of the saints, restoring covenant with our nation, and it was now time for the glory of God to be uh, uh, unveiled, for the glory of God to come in by way of this gate facing east. I'm going to share a little bit more on the reason why we believe covenant with Christ has been restored tonight. Uh, Dan and, and Holly and many others have been instrumental in partnering with the Lord to see covenant with Jesus Christ restored state by state and nationally, divorced from all idolatry. And I believe it is that project, a 10-year-long project, uh, appealing to heaven's court for a divorce from our historic idolatry, and returning to Jesus Christ and asking him, Lord, grant us a restoration of covenant with signs following. Let us know that your court has ruled and you have judged in our favor. Uh, we just give you a little foretaste of tonight. We, we prayed on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, and 50 days later, we, we asked God to marry our land, grant us a divorce from Baal, and crack the hard shell of demonic resistance is a sign that you have heard us. Crack that nut. A friend, Rick Ridings, had a vision of a hard shell of demonic resistance over Washington, D.C. Can you imagine that? A hard shell of demonic resistance over Washington, D.C. He literally saw a nut over Washington, D.C. Nuts in Washington, D.C. And you can laugh about it, but some of you sent them there. <laughs> so we pray, God, we are asking in Jesus' name that you grant us a restoration of covenant with you, divorced from our idolatry. <clears throat> and as a sign that you have heard us, crack that nut. Say it with me. Crack that nut. Say it to your neighbor. Crack that nut. <laughs> and 50 days later to the day, the prophetic vision that we saw, the petition that we made, was met with a response from heaven. There is an earthquake in Washington, D.C., we never get earthquakes. It measured 5.8 on the Richter scale. That's one big earthquake. It cracked the Washington Monument. Gargoyles toppled from the National Cathedral. And there isn't even a place of wickedness where an altar to Baal, I'll just say, a mile up from the White House. The roof cracked. The altar was damaged. A year later, that same altar was roped off with police tape. After an entire year, they still couldn't use it. Because the altar was damaged in the quake. This is kind of like the signs of Elijah, you know? 
you can't make this stuff up. And, and, and it's not attributable to you know, any one person. It was the collaboration of a team working together for the largest and most comprehensive repudiation of idolatry in American history that directly preceded an extraordinary turnaround. We felt, you know, as covenant with Christ is restored, it opens up the door for the restoration of God's glory. Amen. David, he had to repair his nation's covenant with God. He took the Ark of the Covenant, which was in captivity, and restored it. And only then did he welcome the glory with 24-7 worship. So we've got things backward. We think sometimes that if we just have extended prayer meetings, it's going to bring in the glory. Well, we've had to deal with the breaches in covenant that have held the glory at a distance. And this is where New Mexico is so vitally important because of the extraordinary legacy of blessings that the Lord has granted here, but also of violations of those blessings and covenants, especially with the Native American people. Amen. Bloodshed, horrific bloodshed. Promises that have been completely and utterly, intentionally not followed through. We've had to seek forgiveness and receive forgiveness, haven't we? To the extent that heaven's court is satisfied so that the genuine expression of the glory of God, the manifestation of his presence and power can come in. I believe that we are at that time. I believe that we are at that time native and Hispanic and African American and Asian and even us white folks can see together the dream that Jesus conveyed in Revelation 5.8 and 5.9 that every tongue and tribe and nation will stand together before the throne worshiping him together. That's what it's like in heaven and God wants an on-earth expression of this heavenly reality right here, right here in New Mexico. Is that okay to say? So back to my story. We were in Virginia Beach after traversing the geographic east gate of our nation and beckoning the glory of God to come in. And we were really tired after ministering in state after state and place after place. And so we decided to indulge in a vacation. Like some of you are going to get vacations. God's just going to open up the door for you to have vacations. And there's a few of you that have sought the Lord for moving, and God's going to provide the funds for you to move into a new place. I, I felt that for Pastor Wyatt. Is that... There's some kind of shift. I don't know what it is, but there's either a house, new house that you're going to secure or move or something like that. I felt that God's going to give something very special to you in that regard. So, back to Virginia Beach. Kept keep going on these bunny trails, <laughs> rabbit trails, whatever kind of trails you got around here. Wolf trails, bear trails. What do you? I don't know what you got here. Amarillo, jackrabbit trails, okay. Whatever works. Just not snake trails. I ain't following them. So we were, Jolene, what, what she likes to do when she, we, we go to the ocean, she will never get in the ocean, you know, especially if the dolphins swim by because then she's kind of scared the sharks are coming after the dolphins. So she just likes to put her feet in the water. So she, we put our chairs right on the edge of the beach, right on the edge of the ocean, and she gets very, very brown 
I turned very, very red. She's part Native American. I'm pilgrim. And we just rested. We closed our eyes. We rested. Thank you, Jesus. I, my eyes were shut, and I was fast asleep within five minutes of putting that thing in, in, in the sand. And all of a sudden, I had a vision. And in this vision, I saw tracks being laid from Virginia Beach all the way out to San Diego, California. And I saw this engine rolling along the tracks, this locomotive. It was gold and silver. And it had a tornado coming out of the smokestack. How many of you know tornadoes often represent the glory of God, whirlwind? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me the phrase glory train, glory train. And I knew I was seeing the progression of the glory of God. We had beckoned the Lord to come in by way of the gate facing east. And then the Bible says he fills the house by way of the gate facing east. And I knew that the Lord was showing us that he's going to Fill the house of this nation by way of the gate facing east. I, I believe he's going to fill the house of Albuquerque by way of this gate facing east right here. <laughs> Glory train. I thought this was an original idea. I, I knew our next assignment was to get on a train and literally go from Virginia Beach to San Diego by train and, and stop in different places and, and, and just pray and minister and declare. Just to give you a little bit of, of perspective and history on, on our lives, um, we were married on Hanukkah. And so we had a menorah uh, brought in from Jerusalem so that we could uh, use this menorah to hold our unity candle. That's a pretty good idea. Our ministry is called Lamplighter Ministries. And we're going to get married on the first day of Hanukkah. And we're going to have a unity candle service where we light the middle candle, the center candle of this menorah, on the first day of Hanukkah. That's a beautiful idea for Lamplighter. You guys know about Hanukkah, right? When the lamp was relit to reconsecrate the temple after it had been defiled. So what a beautiful ceremony, what a beautiful service. And we decided to start off in worship. And as we were worshiping the Lord, singing glory, glory, send your glory. Hear me on this. Back in 2003, all of a sudden, my best man turns to me. He was about your size, six foot twelve. And he, he turns to me, he nudges me, and I'm like, Will, I'm worshiping my friend Will Ford. He's an African-American brother, minister, dear friend of ours. He, 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 he nudges me again on my wedding as I'm standing up front worshiping with my wife right by my side. And I'm like, all right, all right Will, what's going on here? You don't talk during these things. You worship. And he looks at me, and tears are streaming down his face. And he pointed towards this menorah, and God had lit the center candle of our menorah, our unity candle, all by himself on the first day of Hanukkah as we were singing, glory, glory, send your glory. <coughs> you, you can't make this stuff up. So we were birthed in glory, just like you were birthed in glory. You know the fire of God is a manifestation of his glory, and he always shows up. His fire always shows up when either covenant with God is established or covenant with God is restored. Send your fire, God, that this people may know that you are the Lord and that you have restored their hearts back to you. what Elijah prayed. So we knew that God was up to something even then. People ask, why do you have a faith for the glory of God to be restored? I said, because 
the Lord lit a fire in us, and I'm going to tell you, my fire for Jesus and my fire for my bride has absolutely not dimmed since that day. Glory. You might know the name Cindy Jacobs. She's a, a mom to Jolene and me. Back in 1990-something, she prophesied over me. She said she knew that I was an indirect descendant of Paul Revere. And my heritage comes from the pilgrims and Paul Revere. So it's very interesting you spoke about heritage. It's very interesting you spoke about our, our, our lot being in pleasant places because we have a home that overlooks all of Washington, D.C. It's an amazing watchtower, a place to pray. And regarding Nashville, our friend James Gall lives in Nashville, and he just passed the torch of a prayer movement called Prayer Storm to us. So very accurate word. Thank you. But Cindy prophesied over me that I was going to be a spiritual Paul Revere and that I would go from city to city to city holding out the burning lamp. And instead of saying the British are coming, the British are coming, I'd be saying the Lord is coming, the Lord is coming. I'd be going from city to city to city, and instead of saying the British are coming, I'd say the Lord is coming. She said that in everywhere you go, revival is going to break forth. So what that means for us, number one, is we really are grateful for the faith that became really just imparted into the depths of our being during our marriage. When the Lord lit our fire as we were worshiping, singing, glory, glory, send your glory. It also means, and I don't mean to be rude about this, but we are very careful about where we go. Because we know that as we go, we're not representing ourselves. We are representing the Lord and his assignment to stand and see revival released. Does that make sense? And I'm just telling you, you're glory bound. <coughs> this train is bound for glory. I hope you're excited about this. So in, this in 2014, we had this vision of the glory train. I was very excited about this vision of the glory train. We, we knew that God was going to fill the house of this nation. And then I, I had this pretty strange conversation with an intercessor. Anybody had any strange conversations with intercessors? Kind of make your head tilt a little bit. Well, this lady has helped us, prayed for us, guided us over many, many years. She lives in Seattle, Washington, and what came out of her mouth was stunning to me. Because she said to me, you need to start your glory train in Seattle, Washington. I said, no, you don't understand. We are going from Virginia Beach to San Diego. She said, no, you need to start your glory train journey in Seattle, Washington. Now, one thing we learn about intercessors, prophetic intercessors especially, is there's two different things they all have in common. They all believe that there's more devils per square inch right where they live. And the other thing that they always believe is that revival is coming right where they live, and it's going to start there and spread across the nation. So I'm going, our, our, our dear friend, who's prophesied accurately so often in the past and from great humility, I'm hearing her, and I'm going, Lord, forgive her for her, her presumption. But I'm smart enough to know that, you know, just in case she's right and I'm wrong, I better pray. <clears throat> so I, I, I literally, on the phone, just closed my eyes and prayed and asked forgiveness for her presumption. And then, Lord, what do you want to show me? And immediately I saw the finger of God coming to Seattle, Washington. All right. And it's 
finger of God went from Seattle, Washington, out to Boston, Massachusetts, on the other coast, down to Philadelphia, down to Washington, D.C., where we live, down to Atlanta, Georgia, from Atlanta across to uh, New Orleans and Houston, from Houston out to uh, uh, San Diego and back up to Seattle, forming a circle. And I knew that we were being called by God to circle the nation on this train. In 2016, I'm like, God, are you nuts? <laughs> I, I was planning on being home in Washington, D.C. I was really excited about the presidential elections because everybody comes to us and they all want to take us out to dinner. Instead, the Lord called us to take seven months and literally circle the entire nation and go back through by train. I said, Lord, you, you gotta, you, you gotta speak to my wife about this. <laughs> seven months on a train, she's not gonna like that idea too much. <laughs> Here's a secret, guys. If you hear something from the Lord, you have something you know it's the Lord. I would suggest that before you like get heavy handed, well, we got to do this because God told us to, told me to, and I'm the head, and you got to follow me. You follow me. <laughs> Doesn't work too well, does it? <laughs> if you pray and ask the Lord to reveal to your wife what he reveals to you, you'll have much more synergy. <laughs> and there'll be a whole lot less pillows between you. <laughs> so I prayed and I said, God, would you please speak to Jolene about this? I want the fire to keep burning. And the Lord gave me a vision. He said, as you circle the nation in prayer and revival, you are presenting the Lord Jesus Christ with a wedding ring. America married to Jesus. And when I heard that, I was done, and Jolene was done too. We, we, we said, we, we've got to do this. We knew that we were going and, and literally praying over our borders as well. Okay? Declaring the sovereignty, the constitutional sovereignty of the United States will be upheld. And it will not become a platform for global governance tied to idolatry, bringing this nation and the nations into subjugation. We knew the Lord was giving an apostolic governmental demonstration of the turnaround that he was going to bring. That instead of spiraling down the wrong tracks... He was going to get us back on track. Amen. Say it with me. Back on track. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about turnaround. Personally, for Albuquerque, for New Mexico, and for our nation. Okay? Because I feel like I don't want to just speak about turnaround, we want to go to heaven's court and receive the turnaround that the Lord has. So I'm kind of doing things a little backwards because when I, I, I asked Dan if you guys would be open to having two services because I want to lay the foundation and talk about the turnaround tour that we did last year and all that God brought forth. He, he spoke to us to focus on turnaround for 2016 and the restoration of his glory for 2017. And that's what I want to focus on this morning is the restoration of his glory. So if you need a turnaround, I hate to say this, but you'll have to wait till tonight. <laughs> so when I was out in Virginia Beach and we were just mulling this thing over, 
I, I, I did, in addition to praying and asking God to speak to Jolene, I did what uh, you really ought to do, especially in these days. They're called the days of all from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. I, I consulted with my rabbi, Rabbi Google. Maybe you've heard of him. <coughs> I Googled Glory Train. And to my surprise, I wasn't the first one to have the idea, the revelation that God is going to be coming like an unstoppable train. The move of his spirit being pictured like an unstoppable train bringing cargo from heaven to the earth. I, I discovered that my friend Bob Jones, who went on to be with the Lord, his last overarching prophetic word was the glory train. The glory train. He too had had a vision of, of a train. In fact, he, he got caught up in a prophetic experience and he found himself on a train. How do you people do that kind of stuff? I don't understand. <laughs> Prophets, they, they just go places. You know, especially here in New Mexico. Supernatural transport. How, how does that work? I don't I, Teach me someday, please. But he got caught up in a prophetic experience. He found himself on a train. The conductor came by to take his ticket. So he asked the conductor, what is this train? And the conductor says, this is my glory train. <laughs> well, where is it going? To any city that wants it. I got a question for Albuquerque. Do you want the glory train? Do you want the manifestation of his presence and power to be restored to fullness? Jesus! That's the right answer. That's why I came to Glory Bound, not the church down the street. I knew you guys would have some sense. You've kind of been praying into this this whole time, and we're just coming to bear witness to what you have already received as a promise from God. And to say that this glory is now through the gates. Bob continued. He, he saw the, this move of God was going to bring in the greatest harvest that had yet been seen. The multitudes will be getting on this glory train, which represented the restoration of God's glory. Okay? Your sons and daughters are going to come in. Your mothers and fathers are going to come in. Your crazy bosses are going to come in. <coughs> Your colleagues. Jesus is going to have an end time harvest of every tongue and tribe and nation right here in Arizona. New Mexico. Did I say Arizona? Weird. That's weird. Maybe that's prophetic. Well, Dan was telling me that. Yeah. Well, okay. Call that a slip of the tongue, but it's Jesus. New Mexico and Arizona. Have a good day. All right. He said this. He said, whenever you hear the sound of a train whistle, just say in your thinking, I'm on that train. I'm on God's glory train. This is where my future lies. And, and every day I'm here, that glory train's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. He said, to the extent that when the glory train comes into a city, from that time on, that city will no longer be owned by the enemy. That city will be owned by the Father. Get ready for entire cities to be saved. Get ready for the glory to shine like fireworks in the night.
This is where we're going. I, I even believe, I don't know you people, but I believe that's why you've been called glory bound. I think it's why you start the service with glory bound and getting on the train. I think it's why you got the images of trains and train tracks. Because this train is bound for glory. You're called to be forerunners of the restoration of God's glory in Albuquerque. In New Mexico. Maybe even in Arizona. I don't know. I'm ready for this. How about you? I was ready for it in 2016. Couldn't wait for it in 2016. Delene and I, we started on this train fully believing that revival is just going to break forth everywhere we go. Bonnie Jones kind of set us straight. Said, you're called the turnaround tour for a reason. Bob Jones was. He said, America is on the precipice of a cliff. And if we keep going in the same direction, we go over the cliff and there's no reason to have this revival. She said, you concentrate first on turnaround. You concentrate secondly. For 2016, concentrate on turnaround. For 2017, concentrate on the restoration of God's glory. And then with one of those prophetic smile smirks that only prophets can give, like, I know something you don't. She said, that's when revival is coming anyway. My heart kind of sank. Because I, I, I was wanting both. I wanted the turnaround and the revival. So we decided to focus on turnaround. And I'll tell the story of the turnaround more tonight. But I can tell you that state by state, nationally, and in Washington, D.C., we have had the most substantive, extraordinary turnaround in um, modern history in our nation. Some of you may not like our president, and I understand that. I happen to like him because I had a dream on January 1st of 2016 where Donald Trump was singled out by the Lord as the catalyst he wanted to bring a turnaround to this nation. And here's what I saw. In my dream, again, this is 2016, January 2016. He was just a face in the crowd then. Kind of an unusual face in the crowd. He stood out, that's for sure, but he was a face in the crowd. And I had a dream where Donald Trump had won the contract to restore the Department of Homeland Security. And so he went to a portion of the campus that was completely dilapidated, completely neglected, and he began to restore that part of the campus. While he did, I watched as black women and Hispanic women, and I, I, I would have to say Native women and, and Asian women, whatever, came through the doors of the Department of Homeland Security shouting praises to the Lord. And I knew it represented two things. I knew it represented, number one, that Christians were going to be welcomed back into government in Washington, D.C. after they had been marginalized and ostracized. I knew also that it meant that eventually he would extend his heart and even extend the umbrella of government to welcome in every tongue and tribe and nation for the destiny that God has ordained. And I, I'm, I know that has required a shift. Maybe we'll get to talk about it a little bit tonight, about how that shift is in process 
coming directly from the intercession of the saints. I, I will say, I'll share more tonight, but the whole dreamers thing, DACA, the, the Holy Spirit spoke so clear that he wanted to recover the dream of the dreamers. And in recovering the dream of the dreamers, we would recover our own dream. And I'll just say there was extraordinary intercession even on site that brought a shift tangibly, even to the White House. People have accused Donald Trump of the craziest things. He has a genuine heart. Do you remember after you first got saved? Remember what you were like? I mean, somehow people didn't give up on you, did they? How could we give up on the president? So, Bonnie Jones told us to concentrate on turnaround for 2016 and the restoration of God's glory for 2017. I, I asked her the question. You know, she, she was kind of a mom to the whole journey last year and is a mom to the journey this year. I asked her the question, why would you say 2017 is when revival is going to break forth anyway? And this is her extraordinary response. She said, back in 1977, her husband Bob Jones had a vision. And in this vision, it wasn't a real popular vision. Most prophetic visions, when they're authentic, will at least kind of have some kind of edge to it. He saw Ichabod written over the American church. Ichabod written over the doorposts of the American church. Ichabod, glory departed. Hate when that happens. Glory departed. This was right in the middle of the charismatic renewal. I mean, it was going like gangbusters. This is right when Billy Graham was filling stadiums. This is the charismatic renewal. It torched the Jesus movement, lit a torch called the Jesus movement, and throughout the campuses of California, spreading to the nation, the Jesus movement was redefining Christianity as we know it. Birthed the vineyard movement, birthed all kinds of expressions that literally remain today with us in some kind of form. But he, 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 he was crazy to prophesy Ichabod when the train was moving so strong down the track. But he saw how people had taken the glory and used the glory of God for their own name and their own fame to build their own kingdom instead of the kingdom of God. He saw how we became idolatrous. And when the bride of Christ embraces idolatry, it causes the glory to live. And so he had the audacity to prophesy Ichabod. And 40 years later, we barely even recognized ourselves as a Christian nation, as a covenant nation. We were on the precipice of completely losing our identity and our legitimacy as a freedom nation under God. Wow. And so, the good news, Bob told God, if you are going to write Ichabod and send your glory away, just like you did at Shiloh, you sent the glory away, just like Ezekiel saw, the glory departing. If you're going to write Ichabod over the American church, then just take me home because I know the glory's in heaven and I want to be where the glory is. 
That's what he said. Just take me home. God said, no. So every day for the rest of his life, he made his most important prayer project, praying for America, praying for the restoration of the glory of God that he had tasted and then that had left of the magnitude that even he had experienced. He prayed. And he always believed that after 40 years, Dan, the glory of God would be restored to the land. After a season of 40 years in the wilderness, God was going to begin to lift the hand of discipline and restore the glory to the land. As of March 11, 2017, this is now where we are. The 40-year season of discipline is up, and we are entering into the time of the restoration of the glory of God. He's going to tabernacle with us once again. His glory is going to be a brittle canopy over us once again. It's going to join us back to Him. And in Him, it's going to join a divided land back to each other. We actually got to be with Bonnie on the Bob Jones Vision Center on March 11th of 2017. It happened to be the first day of Purim. It's interesting. When Haman was exposed, Esther was promoted. Haman was taken down. God's people were preserved from a holocaust. And I kind of felt like it was prophetic because I felt like if we didn't make this turn, America would experience some kind of holocaust. And it would even bring a holocaust to the chosen people, the Jewish people, the people that Jesus originally cut covenant with. There was something to where we were on the precipice of a holocaust. And captivity like we had never known before. Thank God Bonnie Jones woke up that morning of March 11th and had a vision where she saw Ichabod being erased by the hand of the Lord. She saw a church... And she saw Ichabod written over the church. And God had this big fat eraser and just erased Ichabod. Erased it completely. Completely off of the church doorposts. And decreed glory in its place. Something pretty extraordinary is confirmation. We were scheduled to go to Israel on Purim. We had to fit this Bonnie Jones meeting in in the morning so we could fly out in the afternoon to Israel to go on a journey retracing the steps of King David as he restored the Ark of the Lord out of captivity. The first place we went outside of Jerusalem was Shiloh, Shiloh, where the Ark was sent into captivity and David had to rescue it where Ichabod was written. And I had a scroll appear before me in Jerusalem. And then I began to pray in the Spirit until the Lord gave definition to the scroll. It was called the Purim verdict. Ichabod erased and glory decreed. And I'm not going to read it, but I'm just going to declare right now. We declared it first at Shiloh. Shiloh. Ichabod erased and glory decreed. It is a verdict from heaven's court. For New Mexico, the Shiloh of New Mexico, Ichabod erased and glory decreed. Ichabod erased and glory decreed.
that really took you. I felt it. Some. Bring it in, God. Your word declares that over all the glory will be a bridal canopy. It'll be a bridal canopy over Zion and all of her assemblies, God. So we just say every assembly in New Mexico, Father God, from Albuquerque, Santa Fe, all the way across, Lord, uh, uh, north, south, east, and west, all the tribes, the Navajo tribe, the Pueblo tribe, the Zumi tribe, Lord, we just declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Zion and all of her assemblies are going to receive the manifestation of your presence and power. It's going to come as a covering, as a bridal canopy, Father God. It's going to envelop the land, Father God. It's going to be a cloud. Cloud by day, even smoke, and the brightness of a flaming fire by night. For over all, the glory will be a bridal canopy. We were ministering in St. Louis, and I had a vision of two large screen TVs. And on the left-hand side, I saw Hurricane Irma over Florida. And on the right-hand side, I saw Hurricane Harvey over Texas. And they both had in block letters, Category 4, Category 4. And as I kept watching, I watched as the fours leapt off the screen and joined together. And I knew the Lord was speaking Isaiah 4-4. When the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the bloodshed of Albuquerque and New Mexico from her midst by the spirit of justice and the spirit of burning, then the Lord will create over Zion and all of her assemblies a cloud of, pillar of cloud, even smoke by day, and a brightness of a flaming fire by night. Over all the glory will be a bridal canopy. And I realized that with those floods, we'd been through the, 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 the flood. We'd been through the, the, the washing, hadn't we? It humbled us. We, at the same time the flood was going, there were amazing wildfires just northwest of here. Montana, more than a million acres burned. <clears throat> I felt like the Lord was saying, you've been through the fire, you've been through the flood. And it's now time for my glory canopy to begin to be restored. So I want to just close this portion out. We'll share a little more tonight. Uh, I hope we're okay time-wise. Are we okay? I, I want to cast vision for what I believe to be a tabernacles movement. The Lord mandated that we finish up this glory train journey by the first night of the Feast of Tabernacles in San Diego, and we bring the glory train back to Washington, D.C. for this 50-state, 50 50-tent 50 prayer gathering on the National Mall over the Feast of Tabernacles. So in Exodus 24, you can turn there or not, just for time's sake, I'm, I'm just going to give a broad overview, okay? Moses, on his glory train journey out of Egypt and into the promised land, they made a stop at the Sinai station. And the glory of the Lord came upon Mount Sinai and Moses was called up the mountain and the first thing God required of him was to renew the vows of covenant that they had made. That the vows of the covenant between God and his people and God and his land would be renewed or declared, I'll just say declared in the presence of God's glory. Moses came and told all the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words the Lord has spoken, we will do. And he wrote down all the words of the Lord. Here's what happened. You shall have no other gods before me. I will be your God and you will be my people. You will be married to me and I will be married to you. And you'll be special among the nations because my glory will be in your midst. Do you accept my marriage proposal? If you do, repeat after me. I do. I do. 
And then Moses went up the mountain into the glory. Verse 15, Moses went up the mountain, the cloud covered the mountain, the glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of all of the people. Moses entered the cloud and he went up on the mountain. He was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. How would you like to be like Moses, the man of God, on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights? Joshua, his, his assistant even, was only allowed to go up halfway. Moses was on the mountain of God with the glory for 40 days. And here's what happened in that experience. God said to him, hey, Moses, I no longer want to dwell on a mountaintop. I I'm want to give you revelation of my next dwelling place on this glory train journey. I'm not going to be way up in the sky. I'm going to dwell with you from place to place. I want you to build me a tabernacle, Moses. I want you to build me an ark for the covenant. The ark of the covenant, a box. Put my covenant in a box and put that box in the center of the tent. Build a representation of the angels of the Lord that surround me in heaven. That surround my throne. And I'm, I'm going to dwell on earth like I dwell in heaven. And I'm going to sit on that mercy seat in between the two cherubim. And you're to come meet with me there like you're meeting with me now on the mountaintop. And it's not just going to be you, Moses. The glory of God is going to impact everybody. It's no longer going to be just Moses on the mountain and the people of God in the valley. I'm going to come and I'm going to camp out with you. That's why I want you to give me one of those tents, Moses. Give me a tabernacle. It was the first tabernacle movement. Every movement afterwards from Shiloh to the tabernacle of David, to the inspiration even of the early apostles and the 24-7 worship movements in Herrenhood, Germany, and on and on to today. It's patterned after this experience on the mountain. He was a prototype, a forerunner that set the precedent for every age to come. Emmanuel, God with us. And I believe that in this season between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur into tabernacles of this year, we are being given a new prototype just like Moses. In fact, we're moving from, we moved from 5777 to 5778 on the Hebrew calendar. The number eight is pictured as a gateway or a bridal canopy. It's no coincidence that all 50 states are going to be ministering in Washington, D.C. to the Lord on tabernacles. My friend David Bradshaw, he's a dreamer. He's a guy who had the idea. He decided to reserve the mall from October 6th through October 9th. I said, David, did you know that was during the Feast of Tabernacles? He said, no, I didn't. It just sounded good to me. Like, you've got to be kidding me. You draw 50 tents, 50 states to the, 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 the nation's capital. Just the picture of how the Jews celebrate tabernacles. And you didn't even know it was over the Feast of Tabernacles? You can't make this stuff up. And then I find out that the number 8, 5778, is the word picture for gate. You're going through the gate. We are going through the gate by way of the gate facing east. And the glory of God is going to fill the house by way of the gate facing east. Looks like a gate and it looks like a bridal canopy. 
Just try. You cannot make this stuff up. We are in the sovereign timing of God. There's going to be storms out there, yes, but God's got a canopy of protection if you will partner with him in this time. He even told Moses on the mountaintop, build a lampstand. I like that as lamp lighting. But before he told Moses to do all that, I'm going to end with this. How many of you are signing up for the Tabernacles movement? How many of you see a new definition of what glory bound is called to do? Anybody? Okay, I'm just checking. Because this is what God told him to do first. We've already received an offering, so this isn't an offering message, okay? God said, speak to the people of Israel that they take from me a contribution. From every man whose heart moves him, you shall receive a contribution from me. We are entering into a season of sowing towards our future. Of giving to see the dream of God's heart that he tabernacle with us. And he said, listen, I don't want the folks who just kind of give out of obligation or they don't consider that the reason why they're giving is so that uh, my covenant will be established with them and that I will dwell in their midst. If if that's their idea of why they want to give, forget it. I don't want it. I want those who have a willing heart. I want those who've been gripped with passion. They can't live without me. And whatever they do, whatever they, they're going to. Do whatever is necessary that I be with them. Those are the ones where your treasure is. That's where your heart is. And I want to remind you that when you give of your tithes and offerings, the Bible prophesies to you that he will open up the windows of heaven. He'll give you a perpetual flow of blessings so great there's not room enough to receive it. And he'll rebuke the devourer off of your land, off of your harvest. We're entering into that season where the blessing and benefit of our giving is going to be exponential. And by the way, if you think your tithe just affects you, the Bible says that the whole nation was cursed with a curse. And I want to see this nation healed. I want to see God's supernatural homeland security do what no man, including the president, can do. He rebukes the devourer off of our land, our nation. Your tithes don't just affect you and yours or even New Mexico. Your tithes affect the nation. Those who have a willing heart. Just keep this in mind. The next time you give, you're sowing into the tabernacles movement that God is releasing. The glory with us. God dwelling with us. You're going to have meetings that you just can't explain. I think you already have this morning. I Just the worship, I couldn't explain it. It was amazing. But this is what we are entering into. And I want to encourage you to invest your hearts and even consider the investment of your finances in this year ahead. Because God is prophesying that he is going to tabernacle with you. And his glory is going to come by way of the gate facing east. From Ichabod to glory. In Jesus' name. It's been an honor to be with you all this morning. And uh, look forward to a little more tonight. We just stand to our feet. If you are in agreement with this, let's just pray and welcome in the glory of God. We stand here at the east gate of Albuquerque. God, we humble ourselves before you. We hear, Lord, that this glory train is taking a turn. And it's no longer going to be one intercessor in the closet or one leader in a divine encounter, but that you want to release your glory and dwell with us. 
be a bridal canopy over us and gather us together as one. With that in mind and with that at heart, we together, Native, Hispanic, Asian, African American, Caucasian, stand with one accord. We say, Lord, send your glory. We welcome in your glory. Just say this with me. Father, send your glory. I welcome your glory covenantally and governmentally into New Mexico, into Albuquerque. Fill the house, God. Come in and fill the house by way of this east gate. We open the gates for you. Shut to the enemy. Open to you. Come dwell with us, God. Send your fire. Send your cloud. Send your bridal canopy. Send your glory. Ichabod erased. Glory decreed in Jesus' name. Amen. What an honor to be with you this morning. Thank you so much. Awesome. Tonight at 7 o'clock, let's do this again. And then we've got some wonderful announcements. Do you want to talk about that? I just wanted to make sure you did. Oh, well, he came to check up on me. Anyway, um, how many of you, like, eat more than one time a day? Heathens, heathens, I'm telling you. Well, if you eat lunch, we've got lunch for you today. Pretty awesome, huh? bunch of people came together, and there'd be lunch in the back room, so please join us for that, okay? Or you must have something. No, I was just going to say uh, uh, the, the, the source of this lunch actually was the, uh, uh, the food that was left over from yesterday's uh, uh, life celebration of, uh, of, of um, Marilyn Painter's husband. If, if, if you happen to know Bob Martin, the helicopter pilot of Channel 13, he was killed last weekend, and uh, uh, Bob is Marilyn's husband. So um, we, we, uh, we were able to do the, uh, 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 to officiate the service yesterday and, uh, and Glory Bound uh, actually catered uh, the luncheon that, that followed. And, and when I say catered, I mean that a bunch of people made a bunch of stuff and it was just absolutely miraculous what Glory Bound did for, uh, for, for the TV stations, for all the people and everything like that. It was a, what a witness. I, I, I put it in the bulletin, but I do believe that this is, uh, uh, this is definitely the biggest little church in America. It really is. Because uh, you, guys, you guys really stepped up, everybody that did anything for the, but especially the cooking, the catering and everything. But anybody that did anything for, for Marilyn this week, uh, uh, just showing up, uh, uh, showing support, showing love, contacting her, whatever. Uh, I know that's greatly appreciated by her. It's this next week that that'll be a real turn too, because you know the family will leave and things will have to start getting back to quote unquote normal for Maryland. So I think that's where we come in as a church. We just really love her and provide a spiritual atmosphere around her, so God can do what God needs to do for her. Amen. So anyway, this is kind of an extension of that. So we're gonna have lunch back in the back room over here, the the children's auditorium we call it. So if you're uh, if you're of a mind to stick around and have some enchiladas with us, and uh, and that'll be wonderful. Elders that are in attendance will be right over here to pray with you uh, about any needs you might have uh, uh, today, any any agreement. If if today the, is the first day you really thought about Jesus as as being your Savior, come up and let them pray with you and kind of seal the deal. If you want to get filled with the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking in tongues, come on up here and do that. Um, Leanne and the healers will be over here where the healing pool is. And uh, if you need a healing in your body, come over here and let uh, brothers and sisters lay hands on you so that that thing goes in Jesus' name. Everybody say goes. goes. Hallelujah. If the Ichabod goes, then the sickness got to go too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we'll just get everybody healed, prayed for, and fed. And it'll be a good Sunday. Amen. Amen. But it'll be even a better Sunday t tonight at 7 o'clock when we get together again. God bless y'all.